I'm just a girl who met a man when he came in from the rain. So once upon a yeehaw, there was this show called Pretty Little Liars, and I used to like it quite a bit when I was a teenager. It was my guilty pleasure show of choice, and honestly, it was kind of a phenomenon back in the day. It had a very dedicated fan base, and a lot of people were excited about it, and I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video and you've never seen Pretty Little Liars, you still have heard of it, because it was absolutely everywhere during its run. Pretty Little Liars is known for its wacky mysteries and iconic characters, and it was kind of a groundbreaking show at the time, because along with Gossip Girl, it was one of the first TV shows to use the concept of social media as a plot mechanic. Sit down, we're gonna talk about you another time. This isn't about you. However, if you know Pretty Little Liars, you're probably aware that it's also known for having one of the most despised series finales of all time. And when the show ended in 2017, there was an absolute uproar amongst fans. But when I heard the show is currently being rebooted on HBO Max, I just felt like taking a look back at the original could be interesting. Because the backlash that followed the final season was brutal, and I'm talking Game of Thrones How I Met Your Mother levels of brutal. It was a big deal, like the show really fucked up at the end. So I wanted to figure out where it went wrong, and because I like to torture myself, I rewatched the whole show. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And as I went through it again, I started to realize something kind of weird. I think the backlash against Pretty Little Liars in its final season was sort of inevitable. See, there were a lot of signs in early seasons that suggested the show was headed down the wrong path, but we were all blind to them at the time, for a reason that I'll explain a little later. Because the show went to shit for a very specific reason, and once you rewatch all of it knowing how it ends, it gets more and more obvious as you see the story unfold. The show had a huge, gigantic problem that was right in our faces the entire time and we didn't see it for seven years. And that huge problem was Marlene King. Marlene King is the creator, showrunner, and executive producer of Pretty Little Liars. She's also the one responsible for ruining the show. She seems like a pretty cool person, so it kind of pains me to be critical of her, but I'm sorry, she's just not that great at storytelling. There are a lot of reasons and decisions that turn Pretty Little Liars from a clever mystery to an absolute disaster, and they all lead back to how Marlene King handled the story over the course of those seven seasons. But before we talk about that, we need to take a look back at the show itself. Got a secret. Stop it, just stop. Now, if you've never watched PLL, here's a quick little breakdown of the plot. Pretty Little Liars is the story of four young girls, Arya, Spencer, Hannah, and Emily, who find their lives flipped completely upside down when an anonymous individual only known as A begins to harass them and threaten their lives one year after their best friend Allison mysteriously goes missing. As they try to figure out what's going on, the girls start to uncover a very large conspiracy in their little town of Rosewood, and they realize that a lot of people in this town have secrets, and those secrets are all directly tied to Allison. Now if you ask me, that's a pretty badass premise, and that right there is the biggest strength of Pretty Little Liars as a show the intrigue. It's very hard not to be drawn to the mystery aspect of this show, and that's definitely what got me into it when I was a teenager. The show is really good at setting up mysteries, and people became obsessed with PLL because of that. Fans would try to find clues in the show and try to solve the mystery before the finale and figure out who A is. It was just a really exciting experience. The plot was set up in such a clever way that people saw it as a masterpiece from the very start. Marlene King had this crazy plan for how the show would end, she was always one step ahead of the audience and everybody was in for the ride. People loved the story, they loved the characters, they loved the romance, the drama, and most of all, people loved Marlene. The fans were so pumped about finding out what her plan was and seeing what it would all come down to, it made the show a phenomenon unlike any other at the time. Pretty Little Liars was an unstoppable force. It was a perfect recipe. So perfect, in fact, that it almost seemed too good to be true. And it kinda was. Because you see, somewhere along the line, the show very famously stopped making sense, but in a way that was increasingly difficult to ignore. There's a highly visible decline in quality with Pretty Little Liars, especially when it comes to the main story. Because when you make your show a mystery, and you get sloppy with it, people are gonna notice. That's kind of the point. And those problems started to bug fans quite a bit. A number of crucial storylines were introduced in the show, and then were just abandoned with no explanation. People started to realize 
realize a lot of characters just didn't make sense and the timeline of the show got way too convoluted, to the point where certain backstories just didn't add up. In other words, people realized that maybe, just maybe, the writers weren't the clever masterminds they appeared to be on the surface. And the more people noticed the plot holes, the more people noticed that things didn't add up, the more frustrating it got. And slowly, Marlene King's perfect facade started to crumble a little bit. I guess we could say that Marlene King was the true pretty little liar all along. I'm sorry, that's not a good joke, don't do that. And as I was re-watching the show, I definitely noticed those issues again, big time. And I can now say with confidence that Pretty Little Liars is a story that does not make sense. And the more you pay attention to it, the less it makes sense. It's one of those stories. The mysteries in Pretty Little Liars are all insanely incoherent, and I mean that in the most literal way possible. Every single enigma in this show is so full of plot holes that it's impossible to piece what the story actually is. So let's break down the territories in which the writing turned to shit. Number one, the characters. The characters in Pretty Little Liars are what we could consider to be iconic. And I don't like to use that word, but I think it's appropriate here. They truly marked a generation of teen television and ruled with an iron fist for almost a decade. The main five especially are really solidified in pop culture, and I think a lot of people who fell out of love with the show over the years kept watching because they were invested in them enough to still want to see their story end. But some of the bigger problems with the writing on the show also began with them. Because as the story went on and started making less sense, so did the characters. And it started getting a little frustrating after a while. You'll see what I mean. So let's take a look at the five main characters in PLL. Arya Montgomery. Arya is a strange character, and I mean that in ways that are difficult to explain just like that in one go. Because in season one, Arya is kind of the main character of Pretty Little Liars. And yes, I know PLL is an ensemble, but I do believe that every ensemble cast still has a dominant character at the center of it all. And Arya was definitely at the center of PLL when it started. The story begins when Arya comes back from Iceland one year after Allison goes missing. Arya is the one who receives the very first text from A. Arya is the one who has the first Allison flashback, and the pilot as a whole is very much centered around her. I mean, hell, she's doing the shush thing in the opening credits. She's part of an ensemble, yes, but she is the main character. Or at least that was the case until season 5 when the writers decided that PLL was going to become the Spencer show, but we'll talk about that more later. I think that with Allison, Arya is the character that has the biggest amount of abandoned plot lines in the entire show. I have rarely seen a character with so much setup that went nowhere. If you watch Pretty Little Liars or you know the fandom even a little bit, you're probably very aware of the fact that for years, fans were absolutely convinced that Arya was going to be revealed as the main villain. So everybody myself included, believe the writers were cleverly planting seeds to set up a major Arya reveal in the final season. And we weren't the only ones thinking this. Lucy Hale herself, who played Arya, said in an interview after the finale that for years she 100% believed A was going to be Arya, and she was ready for that to happen. Honestly, I thought it was Arya. I thought for the whole eight seasons that they were eventually going to make Arya A. There were so many things that like led up to it, she was always missing in action, and I was wrong. Because some of the most intriguing mysteries in the show were centered around her. For example, in season 3, when Arya visits Mona in the Radley mental facility, Mona tells her this. Miss Arya, you're a killer, not Ezra's wife. And then the fans realized the first letter of every word in that sentence spelled the phrase Maya knew, which was clever. And to this day, it's one of the most popular mysteries amongst PLL fans. Do you know why? because we never found out what it meant. What did Maya know? I don't know. Why is Arya a killer? No idea. And also it turns out that Maya's death was really random and had nothing to do with the main plot of the show, so even solving her murder didn't give us any answers. That massive storyline was just dropped. At some point, Arya also learns from Jason that for some reason, Allison had pictures of her sleeping before she went missing. They set it up as this big thing, but we never find out why Allison had those pictures in the first place. Place. In fact, the pictures are never even brought up again. There's also an infamous scene in season 5 when a worker at Radley, Eddie Lamb, recognizes Arya. Arya looks visibly anxious when he recognizes her and this scene hinted at the idea that Arya might have been a patient at Radley at some point. The writers were clearly building towards something with Arya and made it very clear that certain things about her didn't add up and she was probably keeping secrets that we the audience did not know. And then, nothing happens 
with any of it. So in the end, we're left with Arya just being there in the show for no reason, really. All those things about her being shady and having dark secrets are never explained, and she's just a normal girl, I guess. And frankly, I realized while rewatching that Arya is not all that interesting. I think it's about halfway through season one that I realized the only reason why I even remotely like Arya is because she's played by Lucy Hale, and I like Lucy Hale. Arya as a character is not that likable. She's kind of an asshole, and in later seasons, she's rude to everyone she interacts with for no reason. I also checked, and Arya is the only character who cheats on every single one of her love interests throughout the show. And if that's not enough, she also makes out with Ezra's little brother, and she never tells him. Arya is a really bad person. I also realized while rewatching season 5 that I completely forgot the gigantic fact that Arya actually kills someone in this show. She kills Shauna in the first episode of season 5 and I quickly understood that I didn't remember it because she gets over it in like 2 episodes and it doesn't affect her character in the slightest moving forward. She takes a life and 2 episodes later it's like nothing happened. In fact I don't think Shauna is ever brought up again. After all she's only the third black character to be brutally murdered in this show. And I think it's now time for me to address the Ezra thing. The fact that Marlene King and her team of writers put so much effort in making audiences root for a very underage girl to have sex with her English teacher is absolutely insane. Especially because Ezra also had a thing with Allison when she was like 15 and he was in college. So Arya isn't an isolated thing, he's done it more than once. In fact, there's kind of a thing with PLL and underage girls being involved with adult people and the writers work really hard to make it appealing for some reason. Spencer has a thing with Ren. Hannah has a thing with Ren. Allison has a thing with Ian. Spencer has a thing with Ian. Arya has a thing with that step up guy. Even Emily has a brief fling with an adult woman when she's like 16. It's kind of gross. I hate that the writers tried so hard to make these relationships sexy and romantic. And I hate that Arya's happy ending in the finale is just being with Ezra, her English teacher who abused her when she was a teenager. Major. Literally, the series finale takes place on their wedding day. So yeah, I don't care about romantic storylines in these types of shows, but this is just insane to me. I don't know how that happened and nobody batted an eye at it. But all in all, Arya is just a very strangely written character with a lot of wasted potential and wasted storylines, and I realized that I don't like her all that much. Okay, we can talk about the boring one now. Emily Fields. Alright, so here's a hot take for you. I think Emily should have been killed off in season 4. Emily is the most pointless character out of the entire main cast, and I stand by that. I would even go as far as to say that she has absolutely no reason to exist in this show after season 3. And even the storyline she has in season 3 with Lyndon James is completely irrelevant to the main plot, it's just here to fill time. And I know she was an LGBT character and that level of representation was sort of groundbreaking at the time, but aside from that, I feel like the writers never quite figured out what to do with her after the first two seasons, and her presence feels weirdly forced afterwards, especially after the time jump in season 6. And it's not even that I don't like the character, it's just that she's boring, I kinda don't care about her. I genuinely think killing her off in season 4 would have raised the stakes a little bit, and would have given the show a real tension and was desperately in need of by the end. I always said that a big problem with PLL is that it never feels like the main characters are actually in danger. There are no stakes in this story, I, I know everybody is gonna be just fine. Nothing's gonna happen to them. Getting rid of Emily would have made Ace so much more dangerous as a threat, and it would have made a lot of sense given how her character literally doesn't matter for the rest of the show. It's also fair to mention that, unlike Lucy Hale, I don't really care about Shay Mitchell in the role. I'm of the opinion that Shay Mitchell has never been a great actress, and she kinda plays the same character in everything she's in. She was okay in You, I'll give her that, but every other project I've seen her in, she was essentially a character with very little personality that she played the exact same way. Like, they could all be Emily as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, Emily is a boring character and she should have died in season 4. That's it, I don't have anything else to say. Next, Alison De Laurentiis. This one is personal. Alison De Laurentiis, in my opinion, is the biggest missed opportunity in this entire show, and it infuriates me. Alison was one of the best characters in any teen drama ever, but by the end of the series, she was a really sad shadow of her former herself. The writers completely ruined her. She was kind of mystical in the early years of the show. She was this godlike figure floating above the story, and since we believed her to be dead in the beginning, we only ever saw her in flashbacks, which was kind of cool. 
cool. Seeing how people in the present still had fear in their eyes when the name Alison De Laurentiis was brought up was honestly badass. She was this larger than life force to be reckoned with and she was fucking evil. She affected the lives of everyone around her and she's a big reason why the entire town of Rosewood is so fucked up. She caused a lot of damage and she enjoyed every minute of it. Honestly for a while Alison was the best part of PLL. She was an incredible antagonist and the love-hate relationship she had with every single one of the main four was really interesting to uncover. Alison is abusive, manipulative, heartless and she's actually dangerous. Even years after going missing she's still haunting everyone in town. She's kind of the boogeyman of Rosewood. She's Voldemort. She who must not be named. And I absolutely love the concept behind the character and how she functions. Many of her personality traits suggest that she's a sociopath and she's extremely calculating in everything she does. She's a master at exploiting people's weaknesses to manipulate them in her favor and she'll even go as far as blackmailing them if she doesn't get what she wants. She's like 15 years old but even adults and parents in Rosewood are terrified of her. She will break you from the inside out just to see how you handle it and some of the characters she has mentally tortured have been so damaged that they have lasting psychological issues way into their adult lives. I mean hell, Mona develops a dissociative personality disorder from the never-ending bullying Allison put her through and she becomes a murderer. Allison is a very charismatic character and that's mainly thanks to Sasha Peterson and her performance as Allison, which is even crazier when you find out she was only 12 years old when she got the role. Allison is very intelligent but she's also a bit of a control junkie. Power is kind of a drug to her and she needs to feel like she has power over everyone around her to feel at ease and she's ready to do unspeakable things to make sure of it. Allison is an awesome villain. I just love the idea of the dead girl who never really died because she still lives in every person in Rosewood she has terrorized. It's fucking cool. And as soon as the show starts arguing that she could still be alive, I immediately call that she was going to come back and we were going to find out that she's A and she was behind the whole thing this entire time and everyone was going to have to bend together to take her on because she's just this unstoppable force of nature. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. I was so wrong. When Allison returns in season 5, the writers suddenly decided that the right way to go with her character was to give her a redemption story. So instead of this mythical villain we've known since the very beginning who was going to come in and shake Rosewood to fucking hell, we spend the last few seasons watching Allison become the most boring character in the entire show. She comes back in this massive twist that changes everything and then she does absolutely nothing for the rest of the series. The whole story was about her and her insurmountable power in the first few seasons. Allison was the point of origin. Every single thing that happened in the show was directly linked to her. But by the end of the show, she barely has anything to do with the story anymore. She's just there. She's not this strong badass individual anymore. She becomes kind of weak and dependent on other people to function. It really pisses me off how they ruin the character. Allison was this godlike figure, this trickster mastermind type of character. She was sort of the show version of the Joker. But from season 5 onwards, the writers turn her into this lame, boring, and whiny character who doesn't really contribute all that much to the plot. But that's not the only thing that bothers me. One of the biggest intrigues in Pretty Little Liars was trying to figure out what Allison was trying to do before she went missing. We know she had a lot of secrets and it's implied that she was running out of time to do something before she disappeared. But that's also never explained. In 7 seasons, the show never gives a proper explanation for why Allison did the awful thing she did. She lied, threatened, blackmailed, and attempted to kill people, and it was always alluded to that the thing she did had a point. They often give you this impression that she's like doing something, she's trying to get to something. But no, there's never any sort of motivation given for why Allison was so evil and dangerous. It's never explained. So it all just comes across as Allison was doing all these things just because. And I think that ruins a lot of the intrigue. Friends share secrets. That's what keeps us close. I also hate that the writers never bothered to give us an insight on her time away. Allison was missing for two years, but the show never really tells what happened to her during those years. Where was she? Why did she leave? What was she doing during all this time? No one ever questions that, not even the police. We know she was in New York, but what went on there? There's so much story that was just completely ignored, especially because revealing she was alive came with massive plot holes. Like Detective Wilden terrorized the girls for years because 
because he was absolutely sure one of them killed Allison. But then we find out he knew this entire time Allison was alive. So why did he spend years trying to solve a murder he already knew never happened? You know, it's not that hard to make sense, right? Allison De Laurentiis had so much potential as a character, and I hate that the writers just threw it all out the window. She should have been the big bad of this show, but because Marlene King was so hellbent on outsmarting the audience, we didn't get that. Let's move on before I get even angrier. <laughs> Hannah Marin. There isn't much to say about her. Hannah is the funny girl of the group, she has a lot of jokes, and that's kind of it. Ashley Benson embodies the character perfectly fine, but as I was rewatching the show, I quickly realized that, like Emily, Hannah doesn't really need to be in this story. She doesn't have a lot to do with it, especially after season 2. The most interesting part of her character is her relationship with Mona. Everyone sees Mona as a monster and a crazy weirdo, but Hannah is kind of the only one who sees her as a person. She understands that Mona has issues, but she goes out of her way to try and help her get better. And it's kind of cool, it's a nice message to have about mental health. But after season 4, Hannah doesn't really have much to do in this show. The writers force her into a bunch of storylines that in typical PLL fashion have nothing to do with the main plot. She becomes a way for the writers to put more filler in the show and waste time, like that useless storyline in season 5 when she becomes an alcoholic for like 2 weeks. So while fans are waiting for the story to move along, the writers use Hannah to do shit like this. Jesus Christ. Literally, if you take Hannah out of the show completely after season 5, the story doesn't change at all. She has no impact on it. Hannah also kills someone in the show, and just like Allison, Arya, or Emily, who have all killed someone, after an episode or two, she's completely fine, and it doesn't affect her character in any way moving forward. So yeah, honestly, Hannah is fine. She's a little pointless, but when the writers remember she's the comic relief, she's a fun presence to have in the show. I can't really picture anyone other than Ashley Benson playing this role. Alright, we can talk about Marlene's favorite now. Spencer Hastings. Spencer is by far the most intriguing character in this show. Not because of her traits. As a character, she's fine, don't get me wrong. But because in season 4 and 5, the writers just decided Spencer was going to become the main character. And the last like 3 seasons of the show are entirely about her. And it comes out of nowhere. Seriously, after the time jump in season 6, she's the only one who actually has ties to the main story. The other 4 all fall in the background. Many people have speculated that this this change came when Marlene finally realized what she had in her hands with Troyan Belisario. I think it's a pretty recognized fact amongst everyone that Troyan is by far the best actress in PLL. She's way too good for this show, her talent is just unspeakable. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the end of Pretty Little Liars is pretty much the Spencer show. Arya is no longer the main character like in season 1, Spencer is. Allison is no longer the point of origin of the entire story, Spencer is. The villain isn't after all the girls anymore, just Spencer, and every single twist in the show from that point on relates to Spencer directly. It turns out that she's probably the most important character in this whole story, but it's not really made clear until the final season. It's kind of weird because for most of the story, Spencer is never presented as a key element of the plot. She's just one of the main four, but by the end, she's quite literally carrying the entire show on her back. But story aside, as a character, I think Spencer is quite alright. She has cool character traits, and she's the only one in the main cast who has flaws that actually have an impact, which I think makes her character feel more human. Her obsession with perfection and her fear of failure is actually really compelling, and seeing how she's willing to go to dangerous extremes in order to excel is something that I think a lot of people will relate to. Yes, her pill addiction storyline was cheap and felt exploitative, but overall I think Spencer is the most interesting character in the show. It took the writers 5 seasons to figure it out, but better late than never. With that said though, there are some aspects of the character that annoy me a little bit. First off, I hate how the writers make her randomly quote literature all the time. I get they're doing it because Spencer's supposed to be the smart one, but it makes her come across as so pretentious and snobby and she does it so often that it becomes funny after a while. Like she'll just drop an entire quote in the middle of a very serious conversation and I can't help but think how annoyed I would be if someone did this while talking to me in real life. We just found out that Allie's at the police station. She's talking to the cops. And you don't know what she's telling them. The lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. I was hoping you'd be happy for me. Well, you know what they say about hope. 
breeds eternal misery. I'm also of the opinion that Spencer as a character regresses quite a bit after the time jump. Character development isn't really a thing on Pretty Little Liars, but something about Spencer becomes kind of unlikable in season 7, but I can't quite put my finger on it. But with that said, she's the most coherent character out of all of them, and again, Troy and Belisario is just amazing in the role. There isn't much more to say. So yeah, those are the 5 main characters of Pretty Little Liars. And with that down, number 2. So many plot holes. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, Marlene King is kind of a champion when it comes to abandoning storylines. And the reason why it's so frustrating is because she always does a great job at setting them up. If you can compliment one thing about Marlene's writing, it's her ability to grasp you with a mystery. But the fact that the writers kept forgetting storylines and leaving things unresolved is what started to create a frustration with fans. Let me give you a little example. Here's a list of major plot points in PLL that were never explained. Who was Sarah Harvey and why did she work for a. Who was the beach hottie and why was he so important? What was inside of the barrel in Mona's storage unit? What was the point of the NAT club? CC Drake, in general, what the fuck? Why did Alex Drake want to replace Spencer? What did Maya know? What was the point of the Black Widow? How did Ian die? And if he committed suicide, why? Why did Arya have a file at Radley? Who was Leslie Jones and why was her car full of fake pairs of glasses? <sighs> I'm not done. Why was the number 214 brought up all the time? What's the deal with A and Candy? Who the fuck shot Spencer? Why did Alex Drake hate Hannah so much? Who was the blonde girl in Maya's bedroom? What happened to Allison's dad after the CC reveal? What was the point of the dollhouse and why did we never find out what the girls went through in there? Who hurt Allison in the Halloween flashback? Why was Shauna working for A? And why was her murder never investigated? And what was the point of Noel Kahn? The guy literally killed people, kidnapped people, and tortured people more than once, but we never find out what his motive was. And that was just a little part of it. And there's a reason why all these shortcomings in the show are so frustrating. Because lots of shows and movies have plot holes and broken timelines that people can easily forgive. I'm fine with Hermione saying she's never tried a memory modification spell despite using one on her parents earlier in that movie. I'm okay with Eric Foreman turning 18 years old two years after turning 17 in that 70s show. It's fine because none of those things are important and integral to the story we're following. The reason why it's so unforgivable for Pretty Little Liars to be so shameless drowned in plot holes is that it's a show that literally asks of you to pay very close attention to every single detail you can possibly put your eyes on. The DNA of the fandom is rooted in that very concept. All the theories the writers and the cast fed via social media or in interviews telling fans to look for clues and pay attention to everything happening on screen. That is how they kept the audience under their spell. They cultivated this culture of fan detectives around the show and made viewers believe the story was full of hidden secrets all wrapped up in this master plan they've been concocting since season one. But there was nothing there. There was no plan. There were no clues. They were smart about it because of how they built the episodes. Pretty Little Liars is a show that is really good at making you feel like something is right around the corner. Like you are on the verge of a huge discovery. They always give you the impression that the answers are right there and if you just keep watching a tiny bit longer, you'll get them all. But no. That's all a very elaborate illusion. Eventually, people came to realize that PLL's true talent as a show was not mystery, it was stalling. The writers designed a perfect formula to keep people watching without actually having to tell the story. And when taking another look at the show, you quickly realize that an overwhelming majority of the seasons are composed of episodes where nothing happens. And don't get me wrong, they give you the illusion that things are happening. Like maybe Spencer is going to find out she was being followed that day, or maybe Arya is gonna get a cryptic text from A. Or maybe A is going to drive their car into Emily's living room. Or maybe Hannah is going to discover that A left her a note in her tooth. Yeah, that actually happened. But they're all things that never really impact the plot. It's just here to fill time. And when you really take a look at it, you realize that episodes of Pretty Little Liars that actually move the story along are pretty rare. I made sure to count while rewatching, and it's about five episodes per season. And there are 160 episodes in the show total. Total. That means that just about 22% of Pretty Little Liars is the part that's actually worth watching. The rest is just filler, and that says everything you need to know about the writers and how they constructed their story. This show is not designed to craft a mystery. It's designed to waste your time. Pretty Little Liars thrived on the idea of never-ending build-up. And for all intents and purposes, Marlene King and her team were really good at it.
at least until the stalling had to end. Because yeah, after a while, that concept slowly started to turn against the writers themselves. In an effort to build entire seasons out of filler to buy themselves more time, they kept backing themselves into corner and forgetting major plot lines that ended up being dropped without any resolution. I mean hell, it got so ridiculous that when the final episode of the show aired, Marlon King had to do a 30 minute long interview with Entertainment Tonight to explain the twist and attempt to tie up all of the loose ends the finale never addressed. And it's really awkward to watch because when people ask her questions, you can see Marlene struggles to remember what storylines they're talking about, and she's just kind of fumbling through her answers as she tries to explain the dozens of storylines that were left unresolved. And at one point she gives up and straight up admits that they never talked about finishing certain mysteries in the writer's room. Can you talk about the decision, Mar, to make that a dream sequence? Well, I'll be super honest, when we first shot it, we didn't know who it was. I mean, that's a spoiler right there. What do you mean? That's literally your job. It is so embarrassing that a show that demands its audience to laser focus on every aspect of its story didn't actually have a story planned. And it's significant because Marlene King was considered an absolute genius during the show's A-Day. By fans, by the media, you name it. Because people truly believed she had everything figured out and was always one step ahead of the audience. The same way Kevin Feige is with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Pretty Little Liars as a show worked because people believed in the plan. And the big problem here is that Marlene and her team operated on a very strange philosophy. See, they knew people loved the show because of the mysteries and the crazy twists. And so they just started throwing an endless amount of those at the audience. But it was stupid because they were setting up those big mysteries, but they had no idea where those mysteries were going. And as a result, the story became more and more convoluted to the point where it just stopped making sense. The reason why the clues about the identity of A were so misleading and nonsensical is because the writers themselves had no idea who A was. But how does that happen, you ask? Well, I think there are two very specific reasons. One, they didn't actually have a plan and were just making things up as they went without much consideration and lied to the audience constantly. But two, when they had to get to the answers, because you can only stall for so long, the writers became obsessed with the idea of outsmarting the audience instead of crafting a twist in service of the story. In other words, Marlene King absolutely wanted their big twist to be something the fans had not already guessed or theorized about online, no matter how far she had to go with the story to do so. That also came with the show's habit of retracting major storylines. Marlene does this thing where she will introduce something shocking that drastically changes the story for the sake of drama, but then when she's done milking the drama out of it, she will take it back and reset things to how they were before, making the entire plotline devoid of any lasting consequence, and therefore rendering it a massive waste of time. Let me give you a few examples. In season 3, we find out that Ezra had a secret child this entire time and it creates a lot of drama between him and Arya. But when that drama is done, they shift the entire thing and Ezra learns the kid wasn't actually his and things reset to how they were before. Massive waste of time. Also in season 3, we find out that Toby is working for A and there's a lot of drama with Spencer and then when the drama is done, it turns out he was just going on the inside to help Spencer so she forgives him and things reset to how they were before. Massive waste of time. And there are a number of storylines like this that take the majority of the show and amount to nothing. The writers always use that same formula, a big twist, drama, and then take back all of it so you don't actually have to deal with the consequences. Big twist, Jenna isn't really blind, drama, but then she's blind again so it doesn't matter. Big twist, Mona is dead, drama craziness. Except, no, she's not really dead because the writers don't actually have the balls to off a main character even if it serves the story better. The writers in this show are unwilling to commit to anything that could have lasting consequences on the story. They always find a way to write themselves out of it and I actually think doing that as much as they did really hurt the quality of the show. Mona's death was one of the darkest scenes in the entire series and honestly I think it's one of the best cliffhangers they've ever thrown at us. Because I didn't believe she was dead for real but in the very final scene you actually 
actually see her dead body in the trunk of the car. And it was genuinely shocking. I fell for it. I truly believe the show was raising the stakes big time and I was really impressed. But they just couldn't stick to it and it just had to make it a fake out. And Mona turns out to be alive by the end of the season. And I love Mona just as much as the next person. She's a great character. But her being so beloved is exactly why the death was so effective and I guarantee you that if they had not decided to randomly bring her back, her death scene would have been solidified as the most iconic moment in the show. And unfortunately, Marlene made a habit of doing that with every aspect of PLL. Since the audience was paying attention to every detail in the show and came up with all of the most plausible possibilities around a chosen plotline, the writers started to stretch the logic of the plot in outrageous ways in order to force an incoherent twist into the story. And then they patted themselves on the back believing to have outsmarted the audience. And this worked for a while with mysteries surrounding characters like the Red Coat Ezra's evil turn in season 4, and even Allison's return from the dead halfway through the series. However, there were only so many reveals the writers could handle that way. It was becoming kind of obvious that the plot twists in PLL were not in service of the story, and that doesn't work if you decide to throw all sense of logic out the window to get a cheap gasp from the audience. It was clear that their lack of planning was not sustainable, and at that rate, there was inevitably going to be the one twist that would make the audience see the cracks in the wall. And that twist finally came in season 5 in the form of Bethany Young. Now let's be clear here, Pretty Little Liars always had its weaknesses, even in earlier seasons when it was at its best. However, I'm of the opinion that season 5 is where the show officially becomes too long. This is truly the point where people started to feel like the show was kind of overstaying its welcome. And that's mainly because season 5 is a season that is entirely made of filler. It is 100% designed to waste as much time as possible. There's barely any storytelling in it that drives the plot forward. But in the fifth episode of season 5, we hear the name of Bethany Young for the very first time. You see, in season 4, it's revealed that Allison isn't actually dead. So one of the big questions that was raised with that revelation was, well, if Allison is alive, then who's buried in her grave? And the answer to that question is Bethany Young. So who is Bethany Young? we never really find out. The Bethany Young reveal is the one that started the snowball effect that slowly made audiences turn against the show. It was the beginning of the end for PLL, and when we take a closer look at it, it's not difficult to see why. Bethany Young as a character is a really lazy cop-out the writers never truly figured out. She became a bit of a red herring, and her existence in the show itself was a gigantic plot hole that led to what I think was the breaking point of the show. Don't be so dramatic, Allie. Cece? They're not dead. Yet. God, I fucking hate it. Number three, CC Drake and the Broken Timeline. In season six, it's finally revealed that A is none other than CC Drake, a secondary character who has been in and out of the show since season three. Now, it's a very well-known fact amongst fans that the CCA reveal made very little sense, not only because CC's story up to that point never justified that twist, but also because the reveal completely destroyed the show's timeline. The timeline of Pretty Little Liars is just so fucked up. It's actually one of the elements of the show that I find the most frustrating. If you actually try to break down the chronology of the show, well, don't do that, you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. But to make it short, the plot stretches time in a way that makes the story way bigger than it actually is, and it's kind of hilarious. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In the season 3 premiere, the girls start their senior year in high school, so it's around September 1st. However, the mid-season finale of season 5 takes place on Thanksgiving of that same year. That means that everything that happened in season 3, season 4, and the first half of season 5 took place in less than two months. That includes... <clears throat> Get ready, because this is gonna be a lot. The murder of Wilden, Jenna Marshall not being blind and then being blind again. Toby and Spencer working for A. Spencer being locked in Radley. The girls having another blackout and Emily vandalizing Allison's grave. Ezra discovering he has a secret child, getting to know the child, and then learning that's not actually his child. Melissa faking her pregnancy. Arya and Hannah pushing Wilden's car in a lake. Emily meeting Lyndon James, discovering he's the one who killed Maya and killing him. The Halloween train that ends in Garrett's murder. Arya being drugged by her new stepmom. Jason's disappearance. The Redcoat fire. Wilden's car being pulled out of the lake. A planting
hunting bees in Ellis' car, Emily injuring herself while almost being run over by a car, Ezra's A reveal in Ravenswood, Arya and Ezra breaking up and getting back together, Emily and Paige breaking up and getting back together, Caleb leaving for Ravenswood, Ashley Marin being arrested for murder, Spencer finding a dead body in the woods and thinking it's Toby, Cece Drake being revealed as one of the Redcoats, Allison returning to Rosewood, Cece being arrested for Wilden's murder, the murder of Jessica De Laurentiis, the girls escaping to New York, Ezra getting shot, Arya killing Shauna, Allison returning to school and faking the Cyrus kidnapping, A blowing up Toby's house, Sydney and whatever the fuck that was, Allison almost being killed by A, and the fake murder of Mona. And that's not even half of it. All of it took place within two months, and that also puts back in question a lot of major plot points that are now completely devoid of any coherence. Because by that logic, Ezra gets shot in the stomach, almost dies, but then he recovers from it in a couple of days. Arya says the relationship between her brother Mike and Mona was pretty serious when she died, but according to the timeline, they only dated for about a week. Hannah becomes an alcoholic and cures herself in like three days. Toby joins the police academy and becomes a police officer in less than a week. And Emily and Arya both murder someone within three weeks of each other and they both get over it in about 72 hours. The timeline of the show doesn't make any sense. And the CC Drake reveal in season 6 was the final nail in the coffin for the timeline. Because the story behind why CC is A is just impossible. It doesn't add up. The writers gave her an origin story that is so poorly thought out that it became obvious to everyone that Marlene did not plan this several years ago. It seemed more like a last minute choice they forced into the show. Here are a few reasons why the reveal doesn't make any sense. Cece witnessed Bethany Young killing Toby's mother when she was a child, but we see Toby's mother very alive when Toby and Allison are already teenagers, so that's not possible, because that would mean Cece is younger than Allison, but we already know she's six years older than Allison, so there's no way she witnessed that murder as a child. Also, Cece had a roommate at the University of Pennsylvania, except no she didn't. She was a patient at Radley, she lived in a mental institute, that's her whole backstory. And speaking of which, there were a number of times where we saw Cece visiting people at Radley. But how? Again, she was a patient at Radley. Why would she ever need to visit people? She already lives here. And if she was doing it under another identity, how did nobody recognize her? And why the hell did she date Jason if she knew he was her brother? Why are you like this? It's not that hard to make sense. But wait! There is more! One of the biggest mysteries in Pretty Little Liars is figuring out what exactly happened the night Allison went missing. Every season, we learn a bit more about what went on during that crazy night that was the most important point in the timeline of the show. We were made to believe that all the answers we are looking for were present that night. And everybody kind of assumed that when A would be revealed, we would get to see the whole night play out. You guess where I'm going with this, right? We never really find out what happened that night. We have bits and pieces, but it's never fully explained in a way that's coherent, and a lot of information we get create even more plot holes in the timeline. Why was Bethany Young wearing the same dress as Allison, and how did she get her bracelet? Miss Cronwall pulled Allison out of the ground after she was buried alive, but who dug the other hole for Melissa to bury Bethany? How did Cece kidnap Sarah Harvey that night if Wilden took her back to Radley after hitting Allison? Mona killed Bethany Young after mistaking her for Allison, so why did she help Allison? when she saw her injured later that night. Somebody explain this to me, please. Okay, I could do this all day, but you get the point. Long story short, the CC reveal was the moment in the show where fans collectively understood without the shadow of a doubt that Marlene didn't actually have a plan. And it broke the hearts of so many fans. Seeing the reaction to this finale online was kind of sad, and it changed how the fandom saw the show moving forward. It quite literally broke the fandom, but unfortunately, Marlene wasn't done. If you don't know, the CCA reveal in Season 6 was originally supposed to be the end of the show. But when season 5 premiered, we got the announcement that PLL was gonna end after 7 seasons. So apparently there was more pretty little lying to do. But even the writers knew that attempting to stretch the story even more was just unreasonable, so they decided to come up with a new mystery after this original one ends. And this is where we officially meet the death of pretty little liars. <sighs> Number 4 the final season. What the fuck happened? What is wrong with you guys? Why did you have to make this? To this day, the final season of Pretty Little Liars is a weird anomaly that just pisses me off, and it still bothered me when I rewatched it. It's so bad. What the fuck happened? I'm gonna go through it very quickly, because I'm gonna get angry. So the final season, which is kind of a mix between the second half of season 6 and season 7, takes place five years after the CCA reveal. There's no A anymore, the girls have moved out of Rosewood, they finished college, and they're all grown up now. But then Cece gets murdered and a new A arrives and wants the girl to find out who killed Cece. With the board game? 
that tortures them somehow? Anyways, there's a new A and we gotta find out who killed Cece, that's the plot. Now I need to say something, so open your ears because it's really important. Any mystery plot, whether it's a movie, a TV show, a book, anything with a mystery element to it, is exciting because of one very basic concept. And that's the concept of the answer to the mystery hiding in plain sight. Right? That is what's so cool about a whodunit murder mystery. You know the killer is one of the characters you already know. That's why you're looking for clues and information. Some Someone is acting innocent but isn't. You have this whole picture in front of you but you're not seeing everything yet. You have to really put your eyes on every detail to see what's being hidden right in front of you. That's what it was like to be a fan of Pretty Little Liars. You had all of these characters, they were all sort of suspicious for different reasons, they could all have a motive, at times some appeared to be more guilty than others, and fans relentlessly try to figure out what was hiding in plain sight. That was the entire fun of this show. So imagine the reaction from the audience when it was revealed in the series finale that the final villain of Pretty Little Liars, the resolution to the ultimate mystery of the show, was a new character we had never met before. Do you believe me now when I say the backlash over the ending was brutal? The series finale of Pretty Little Liars was one of the biggest slaps in the face ever given to an audience. Because you can say whatever you want about the show, but it had a very loyal fandom, and even when people lost faith in Marlene King after the CC reveal, I don't think anyone expected something that insulting to come along. Because the final villain is not only a new character, no, that's already bad enough on its own, but that's not it. The writers really went all out with the laziness and pulled one of the most tired tropes in the history of television. They pulled the evil twin card. Yeah. The final villain of the show is revealed to be Spencer's secret British evil twin, Alex. And if that's not enough, they're the daughters of Allison's mother's evil twin because evil twins are such a good twist. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Anyways, the end of PLL was lame and full of plot holes and it left so many storylines unresolved, fans were just disappointed beyond words. To me, the worst part of it is that, in the end, we never get a coherent reason to explain why the girls have been tortured so much. It's never explained, they just were and that's that, I guess. There was a real uproar on social media after the finale and Marlene and even some of the actors had to address it in interviews. Like it was bad, they really dropped the ball and I think they know it. Well, there's, yeah, there's some, uh, there are some, uh, s there's some... I'm sorry, but if you have to do a 30-minute interview to tie up loose ends after your finale, it's probably because you didn't do a good job at wrapping things up in the show. Look, I love Pretty Little Liars. I know it doesn't sound like it because I've been ranting for the past, like, six hours, but I did enjoy watching this show week to week and seeing what fans had to say about it. Was it a great show? No, especially not in the last few seasons. But I do think it has some merit when it comes to its impact on pop culture. Despite everything, I believe Pretty Little Liars has beauty as a show, because it created a real sense of community with fans. The experience of being in this PLL community was genuinely exhilarating. It ended up really badly, but there was a significant period of time where the ride was really fun and endearing. I think I can be honest with myself and admit that it's not a good show, but it accomplished so much and was so groundbreaking at the time that I would disagree with anyone who says it doesn't deserve its place in pop culture. That said, you didn't have to brutally kill off every single black character in the show. That's just kind of shitty. You couldn't let one live, just one. Marlon King seemed to be really bummed out that HBO Max moved on without her with this new reboot. And despite the fact that I'm highly critical of her writing, I kind of feel bad for her. PLL was her baby for almost a decade and it can't be easy to see it slip away like this. And yes, business wise, it makes sense because every show she has created during and after Pretty Little Liars was canceled very early on. Ravenswood was canceled, Famous in Love was canceled, and she was also teaming up with Shane Mitchell to make a new show called The Harrises, but the project died in pre-production and they never even shot the pilot. And after the cancellation of the sequel series, PLL The Perfectionist, I think it became very clear to Warner Brothers that audiences were no longer willing to put their trust in Marlene. So they decided to make this reboot with another team. It sucks, but I get it. Apparently it's gonna be called Pretty Little Liars Original Sin, and it's both a reboot and a sequel. It's gonna have new characters, it takes place in a different town, but it's also been confirmed that the story will be set after the event of the 
original show. And even if Marlene isn't running it, I was personally still excited for the reboot, and then I found that it's being made by the showrunner of Riverdale. Bruh. So I'm not excited anymore. So yeah, Pretty Little Liars is an iconic show that wasted a whole lot of potential and took a lot of wrong steps. Love it, hate it, it is what it is. But I hope it serves as a lesson for the future iteration of the show. Because like Game of Thrones taught us, you can get everything right, but bad writing never wins. It's still better than Emily in Paris though. Thank you